Hey YouTube, HD Perspective here. Just wanted to make a video and show you all my air tools and cordless tools. Kind of go through them, the deals that I got, what worked, what didn't, what's good and what's not. Maybe you can learn something, maybe you can avoid some of the pitfalls I did or find something that might be useful for your application too. Anyways, well let's get started. So here's all my impacts. I've got 3 8 air sole around, half inch snap on, half inch Mac, three quarter drive snap on, and a half inch DeWalt cordless. Uh, this impact here, air sole around 3 8 it's got a lot of power. I really recommend it for how small it is. I actually bought this thing used off of the tool truck. I believe it was rebuilt when I first bought it. It's about nine years old now and it still works flawlessly. I really recommend this impact if you need to get one. I'm not sure if they're still available or not, but it's been a good one. I haven't had to have it rebuilt or anything yet. Uh, this here, my snap-on half inch. I bought it because I wanted kind of a smaller half inch that fit into tight areas. I thought, you know, it should have good power, the ratings were there or whatever, but it just doesn't have any power and it's kind of useless to me. Like, I uh, I never use it, it just kind of rolls around in the bottom of my toolbox. I can't even take off a car tire with it, so uh, I believe it's an MG325. Maybe it would be good in a 3.8. I think they do sell them, but I don't know. It It's just, just not enough for what I do anyways. Maybe if you're building like uh, Swiss watches or something, it'd be good for that. I'm not too sure. <laughs> uh, this is kind of my main impact, my daily driver, the one I use all the time. Uh, it's a Mac Tools one, AW5500. I think Titanium or something like that. I believe there's Ingersoll Rand gun that's the same. And when it came out, I actually bought this in 2007. So... You know, it'd be just about 10 years old this year. Uh, when I bought this, it was the latest and greatest. Uh, 1,000 foot-pounds, nut-busting torque was their big advertisement. And uh, it does have good power. Uh, I've had to have it rebuilt, I believe, at least three times now. Uh, once, when it was still on warranty, it came with a two-year warranty. It jammed up on the inside, the internal mechanism, so they rebuilt it for me. Uh, the second time I had it rebuilt, the anvil actually snapped off the end, so maybe uh, not necessarily nut busting torque, but maybe anvil busting torque, I'm not too sure. So I had it rebuilt there, and I think it cost me around 100 bucks uh, for the kit. And then the third time, all the guts out of the handle, they spit out the end one time when I was using it. So then I think if you can see here, there's little tabs here that hold the mechanism in place, and they just broke after time and metal fatigue and then this came out. So I had to rebuild then again. But you know, for 10 years old and the amount of use that it's gotten, it's been a good gun. I have no complaints with it. Uh, this here, my three quarter snap on, I think it's an MG 1200. I don't know, I can't see the number, the number on it, but uh, I actually bought this one on eBay. But, uh, and I think it retails for around a thousand bucks. I bought it for, I want to say, four hundred dollars. And, uh, I thought to myself, even if I have to get it rebuilt, you know, I'll still be money ahead. And, but I haven't, and it's been a good gun. It'll take off, you know, truck tires, no problem. Got the uh, lug nuts on them. Uh, it's a, you know, a hefty weight to it, but you know, pretty good for three quarters. I have no complaints with it at all. It's been a really good gun. And then last, I bought this DeWalt uh, cordless impact, mostly because I'm kind of already invested in DeWalt. I've got the battery packs to go with in the charger and stuff like that. So um, I don't really use this one too much for work because we've got air everywhere in the shop. I mostly have it at home for doing stuff at home with the uh, cars and stuff like that. So it's good impact, good good torque on it, good power. It'll actually take off the lug nut on a truck tire. Um, 
I've been fairly happy with it so far. It's good to take on road trips, you know, if I have a breakdown on the side of the road or something like that, or I gotta change a tire, yeah, I'll just pull this thing out and uh, bam, it's done. So here I've kind of got my cutting and grinding tools, uh, die grinders and stuff like that. Um, this here is an air angle grinder. I just actually got it at Princess Auto for 40 bucks, I think. Um, it looks the exact same as the Mac Tools version, except, well, maybe it's just like a Chinese blueprint or something like that, but it works really well and I've had it for many years. The only thing I've had to do is uh, I changed the bearing out on the inside once. It cost me about four bucks. I just uh, really like it because it's lighter than an electric grinder and it doesn't vibrate as much. So if you're using it for an extended period, uh, you know, your hands don't go numb from the vibration for so long. The only issue is, I mean, obviously it doesn't have the same power as an electric one, but I think it's a good tool to have in your toolbox. And if you got lots of access, then, you know, it's got more power than say, you know, something like this. Uh, this tool here, uh, just to cut off, it's a Mac Tools Model AT35A. I bought it uh, thinking, you know, it's big, it should have a lot of power, and I liked kind of this feature on it, like you could change the angle. Um, later on, once I've had it, had it for a while, I kind of realized that it's not really that useful because, you know, if you're in a tight spot and you put it on an angle like that, this edge here is still fairly thick, so it doesn't really like give you the clearance that you think you would you'd get from it. You, you almost get better clearance from this with just having the end on there for the zip disc. Um, but you know, so buyer beware with that one. It does have quite a bit of power, and sometimes it, it does work depending on the angle you're working at. But it's not all that it's cracked up. These two, I guess, I bought together as a set on sale. Sometimes Mac has these, um, you know, one five five three six three and zero eight eight six two seven. I believe the numbers kind of faded. Uh, they're good for getting in tight spots. Not a lot of power, but you know they serve their purpose and they're fairly inexpensive. I don't remember what I paid for them back at at that time, but I think it was, you know, 100 bucks or something like that. They're a little more pricey now, but still a good set. Um, they're kind of worn out now too, but, but they do the job. What I use most though is this uh, Ingersoll Rand one, is their Edge Series die grinder, 3107G. I like it. It's got good power. The only thing that I don't like, I guess, is that the air comes out of the handle. I guess that comes down to personal preference. So sometimes, depending on the angle, it can kind of blow you in the face. I prefer something like this where the air comes out of the end and then it kind of blows your piece off that you're working on too. But I guess that can be annoying if, if you're working on something that's dirty. Uh, this one I bought, I can't, I bought it at Princess Auto Power Fist, you know, just a Chinese tool, but you know what? It hasn't let me down. It works. Um, it's got a good amount of power. Uh, it feels good in the hand. I got this adjustment for the speed too. It's kind of nice. Overall, it's a good tool and I can't really complain about it. Sometimes you can get lucky with those cheap tools. So here I've got my drills. Um, this one's just a 3 8 one direction, forwards. Uh, I got it given to me by an old guy. Um, I don't use it too often, but it does come in handy. It's fairly fast, so, you know, it's good for drilling through sheet metal, maybe, or, you know, thin stuff like that, Pot panels, bodywork. It does come in handy. Uh, this just an electric drill, DeWalt 20 volt. Um, I don't use it a ton either, um, but it does come in handy. It's nice not to have, you know, a cord or a hose. So it does come in useful. I do recommend it. It's been a good, good drill. DCD 780. Uh, this is an angle drill. 
Again, I bought a Princess Auto Power Fist. Uh, and I haven't had any problems with it. It's nice for getting in the tight areas with low clearance. Uh, it is a little bit fast. And it's just a 3 8 so, you know, drill, biller, bigger drill bits don't work with it. And then I've got a snap-on reversible half-inch drill. I really like this drill. I, like, it's a nice drill. It was expensive. Reversible is nice. It's quiet. It has a lot of power. It seems to be kind of the right speed for drilling steel. Uh, the only issue I guess I've had with it is the one time I went to go take my drill bit out of the chuck. And I was just using a chuck key and to loosen it off. And, I, and the whole chuck or the output shaft going into the chuck from the drill snapped. And uh, unfortunately, snap-on wouldn't warranty it for me. They charged me... You know, 100 bucks to have this thing rebuilt. Um, but other than that, you know, it's been a good drill. I don't know if it was just a flaw on this specific one because, like, that was several years ago and I haven't had that problem since. Maybe some of you can let me know in the comment section below, you know, if you've had a similar issue with this drill. Uh, it's a 084 So here I've got my air hammer. I bought this air hammer for $12 at Princess Auto when I was a first year apprentice just because I needed one to work and I thought, well, you know, when I have more money, I'll replace it with something nicer, but the thing has never let me down and it it hits pretty hard. I, I really recommend it if you can find one. Maybe other people haven't been so lucky, but, uh, you know, and I, I added this, uh, holder on the end to keep your your bits uh it just came with the spring but i've been really impressed with it and for 12 dollars like it was on sale on clearance just can't go wrong uh this here is my milwaukee 3 8 electric ratchet i really like it it comes in handy I couldn't get it into tight spots. You don't need the hose. It is a little bit big. It's not too heavy though. And uh, the other the thing I will say about it, it does it doesn't have very much power. It's good for running in bolts uh, in tight areas, and then you probably have to tighten them up later or afterwards with a wrench by hand or something like that. But just for running stuff in and out, it's perfect. It has a little light on the end here, so it lights up your work area. I've had it for about two years now, and it's been pretty good. This mechanism here can be can be hard to reverse your direction sometimes, so I've had to take it apart quite a few times and just clean it out and oil it up, but I guess that's to be expected. And this one, just an air ratchet. It's a, actually a Craftsman, got that Sears. Um, I don't use it a whole lot, mostly because it's so loud and uh, just so annoying to use, I guess. Sometimes it's the only thing that'll work though, like getting in the tight spot. And it does have good power, but then you gotta be careful, obviously, when you're tightening something up, once it hits the end, you know, you can catch your hand in, in between something and then you're, you're stuck holding the trigger and you can't let go and you pretty much have to unclip the airline. I don't know, maybe that's, I'm the only one that that's happened to, but I got my doubts. So, lastly, I've just got the 20 volt uh, DeWalt impact driver, and that came with my drill as a set. I got it at Costco, uh, you know, some somewhere around the $200 mark for the set, and it came with two batteries and a charger. Uh, I really like it. Uh, it's good for if you're doing, like, redoing decks on uh, high boy trailers, you know, uh, screwing down the planks and stuff like that. Uh, I do have the adapters here, so I can put a put a socket on the end if I want or what have you. I I recommend the set, it's good. And then I also have this DeWalt skill saw or uh, circular saw. It's also the 20 volt uh, max, so it uses the same batteries as the rest of my DeWalt stuff. I also kind of use it for trailer work, redecking the trailer. Uh, I don't know why, what it is about operators and punching holes in the deck. But they seem to enjoy it, so. I get to fix it. Must be nice, eh? To just wreck some piece of equipment and then drop it off at the shop and have somebody magically fix it for you. Anyways, 
that's all for today. I just wanted to show you some of my tools. Hopefully it's helpful. You know, you can avoid some of the pitfalls that I might have, or, and also, you know, maybe get some of these tools that have worked well for me over the years. Uh, if you like this, please subscribe. Comment down below with any tips you might have. We'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.